scripture, and then uh, we'll dismiss in time for the matter of business this evening. But 2 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 4, the word of God tells us, Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, Add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity or love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord and pray, and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this time that you allow us to come to your house this evening to worship thee in spirit and truth. Lord, we are thankful for your word and for the exceeding precious promises that you give us from your word. Father, we are so thankful, uh, Heavenly Father, for all that you do for us. Uh, your word tells us that you daily loaded us with benefits. And Father, we've truly been blessed and loaded with blessings from thee today. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, as we look to the bread of life tonight, uh, Father, may we take into consideration uh, the instruction from your word. I, I pray, Father, that you'd help me as I preach tonight, dear Lord. Just give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach the truth in love. And, Lord, to, to be able to, to preach and teach thy word and speak the truth in love tonight, Heavenly Father. And if there's one here this evening that does not know thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that you convict their heart of sin, that you draw them into yourself, and that they come forward tonight and be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. amen. Uh, last week we left off in verse number four, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Now, depending on who you talk to, uh, there are different theologians uh, that uh, say that there's anywhere between 30 to 33,000 promises given in the Word of God. Uh, beloved, I've not went through and, and counted them, I've not went through and studied them. But this much I do know, as we talked about last week, God cannot lie. Amen. And if God promises something, you can rest assured that it's going to take place. Uh, whether it's an unconditional promise or a conditional promise, the Word of God tells us, and this is one characteristic about God that all of us should love tonight and hold dear to our heart, God is faithful. And God is not slack concerning His promise as some men count slackness. Yeah, uh, beloved, if you ever promised something and you promised that uh, you would do this, this, and this, and you did this and this, but you didn't get to the third this, but you felt like you kept your promise. Yeah. And, and it didn't cause any problems and each party went their way, but that's slackness because you didn't do this, this, and this. When God says He's going to do something, He does it to completion. He is not slack. Amen. And I'm so thankful that that one thing that God cannot do is He can't lie. Amen. He cannot lie. And so, uh, beloved, whereby are given us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you come to the Lord with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and by faith call upon the Lord with a repentant heart, turning to Him for salvation and for forgiveness, He will save you, and the righteousness of Christ is imputed in place to your account. And beloved, you can live a godly life and have that divine nature here upon this earth. Amen? And so uh, I've had people all the time, Preacher, you can't live a godly life in today's world. You can't live like a Christian in, 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 in today's world. I uh, love the Word of God tells us denying ungodliness and living godly where? In yeah. this present world. Yeah. And so if you're living here upon planet Earth, yeah. the Word of God makes it plain no matter what generation, no matter, no matter of what day and age that we're living in, you can live a godly life in this present world. It's whether or not we choose and desire to want to do that or not. And so, beloved, it can be done. You just got to do it God's way. Amen. And so notice here uh, that we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And, beloved, no doubt we're living in perilous times. We live in a corrupt world. And it's not getting better. It's only getting worse. Uh, the Bible says evil men and seducers who wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And the reason today that people are more and more 
uh, corrupt, if you will, and more and more evil is one. There's a whole lot more people living on earth now than it was thousands of years ago. The population is much more increased. Uh, of iniquity will abound. Why? Because the love of many shall wax cold. We're living in a generation where people don't care about anything, anyone, except themselves. Uh, if they see you on the side of the road lying there, uh, nobody, uh, uh, eventually somebody will come by, a good Samaritan, come by and try to offer help. But how many other people drove by and didn't offer any assistance? Well, preacher, I don't want to get involved. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get something or bite off more than I can chew. You know, I'll tell you what, we just live in a generation where the love of many is abounding cold and people just don't care anymore. And beloved, it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. And then when the church is removed and the rapture of the church takes place, you think it's bad now. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And so, uh, we get here to verse number five. And beside this, after you get saved, and beside this, giving all diligence. This is something that you need to purpose in your heart. Listen, I, I have people say, Preacher, nothing wrong with this statement. I understand what you're saying. And for, for, for years, I thought this way myself. Boy, I'm just glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm getting in. You know, I'm thankful I'm going to heaven. Now listen, I, listen, there's nothing wrong with thinking that way. And you should rejoice and be thankful for your salvation that you're going to heaven. But beloved, once you get saved, that is not the end of it. That is the beginning of a new life in Jesus Christ. Don't rest on that world. Well, I'm just getting in. I'm thankful I'm getting in. And uh, I don't care if I'm a janitor in heaven. I'm just glad I'm going to heaven. Uh, beloved, God wants to utilize you, wants to use you, and oh, by the way, has something that you can do to bring honor and glory to His name. And so, beloved, uh, uh, you read about the fruit of the Spirit, I believe it is, in the book of Galatians, and this is somewhat parallel to that. And we're going to talk about these things that I just read about here shortly. We won't get through all of them tonight. We'll get started. But giving all diligence. After you get saved, don't be just satisfied with going to heaven. Give all diligence to living a godly life that will glorify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And give diligence to being a witness, to being a light, and telling somebody else about Jesus Christ. And beloved, if you're going to do that, you have to give diligence. You've got to purpose in your heart that you want to be more for God. Amen. In other words, just don't sit there, ah, I'm getting I'm, I'm a preacher, I know I'm saved, and I'm thinking I'm saved, but you know, I'm not going to get too involved. No, that's the wrong attitude to have. Right, now, beloved, God saved us not to sit on the church pew, but to serve him and to glorify him. And he said, I want you to do what? Bring forth much fruit. Bring forth fruit. And so, beloved, if we do these things, this is how we'll be fruitful. And We'll see that as we go through the scriptures here. Verse number five, and beside this giving all diligence, add to your faith. That's how you that's how you get saved, amen. Faith in Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Romans 10 17 tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. The word faith here is talking about redeeming faith. Saving faith. You come in and you hear the gospel message. If you were here for the Sunday school hour this morning. I give you the definition of the gospel. And what it means to be saved. And how to, how to be reconciled back to God. It was so winning 101 in Sunday school hour this morning. And beloved, all of us got saved the same way. We heard the gospel message. Heard about Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit began to draw and woo us and pull us to God, saying that you're a sinner, telling us that we're a sinner, that we're under the condemnation and judgment of God, and that we need to repent and cry out to God for salvation and be reconciled back to God. That's how, how I got saved. And by the way, that's how you got saved as well. And so, uh, uh, beloved, uh, add to your faith. The word add means to what? Increase. Multiply. So in other words, don't sit on your laurels. I love you to get busy. Now you're saved. Now you need to add to your faith. And notice the first thing that's mentioned here. Add to your faith uh, virtue. Add to your faith virtue. 
And then after uh, after virtue and the virtue knowledge. Well, talking about faith, it all begins with faith. The Bible says the just shall live by what? Sight? No. Live by faith. You're saved by faith, and after you get saved by faith, you're to live by faith. Uh, somebody asked me, say, preacher, what's the definition of faith? Uh, I know that theologians and Bible scholars will debate this, but I believe that the biblical definition of faith is found in Hebrews yeah. chapter 11, verse number 1. Now faith is. Yeah. Amen. Somebody, somebody done quoted the scripture. Yeah. Uh, faith is. The word is means equals to. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I believe that is the biblical Man. definition of faith. Some say that the definition of faith is found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. I believe that is the object of our faith. That's where, where our faith should be placed in the individual, the who, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 tells us, Wherefore, seeing we also comes to battle so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which the so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. There's the object of our faith. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus Christ should be the object of your faith. Not Liberty Baptist Church. Not religion. Not your good works. Not baptism. But the object of your faith should be Jesus Christ. Should be Jesus Christ. And so the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1, verse number 17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. If you can trust God with your eternal soul, if you've got enough faith to trust God with the most important position you have in your life, Jesus Christ asked this question. What shall it profit a man? Yeah. Profit means to gain, yeah. to increase. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world yeah. and lose his own soul? Now, if you've got enough faith to trust God with your eternal soul, yeah. why can't you trust God with your light bill? Why can't you trust God with your electric bill? Yeah. Why can't you trust God with your health? Yeah. Why can't you trust God with your family? Yeah. Christ said, the world give you all these things. What has it profited you? But if you've got enough faith to trust the God with your eternal soul, then you shouldn't have any problem with the electric bill, the car payment, your health, a relationship with a, a spouse or with your children or with your grandchildren. If you can trust God with your soul, you can trust God with anything. Amen. Yeah, yeah I, I talk to people say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I know without a shadow of doubt I'm going to heaven. And they'll sit there and you look at their fingernails and they're bit down into the quick. Yes. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to pay the power bill. I don't know how I'm going to pay the insurance bill. Where's your faith that? Yeah. If you can trust God with your soul, you mean you can't trust Him with your power bill? Your soul's much more important and valuable than your power bill or your motor scooter bill or whatever the case may be. Amen. And so, beloved, uh, the just shall live by faith. And I hope that uh, you're determining and purposing to live by faith. That's a child of God this evening. Romans chapter 5, verse number 1 tells us, Therefore, being justified, justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you get saved by faith, you make peace with God. Did you realize in a lost state that you're the enemy of God? And that the judgment and condemnation of God abides on you in a lost state. I did not read that until I went through and read the Word of God uh, from cover to cover for the first time. Hey, and a lost, a lost person, they're an enemy of God. And the judgment of God abides on them. But when you got saved, you not, not, not only make peace with God, but as a believer you can experience the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Uh, Brother Larry was sharing with his testimony right before the serve, uh, before before we started the preaching service. Uh, had a dear friend go home be with the Lord, and as walking by, paying last respects, had peace in his heart because of his testimony that he was saved, that he was born again, and that he knows that his dear friend, his brother in Christ, 
It's not, he's not in that in that, that body anymore. He's with the Lord, praise be to God. And so, beloved, the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words. The exceeding great and precious promises of God. They're designed not only to, uh, to give us instruction, but to bring us comfort. Amen. You see. And so, beloved, uh, the Word of God tells us, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Aren't you thankful that you made peace with God? And as a believer, you can experience peace with past with all understanding. Amen. We've all, uh, since our salvation, I think all of us, uh, uh, can say that uh, we've experienced the peace of God because all of us has heard bad news since our salvation. We've experienced heartache. We've experienced heartbreak. We've experienced uh, tribulation and trials. But yet, in spite of all that, we can have an inner peace knowing that in the end, in the end, God's going to deliver us from this and we're going to reign victorious Amen. in Him and through Him. Amen. Uh, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5 tells us, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Verse 5, That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Uh, let me tell you something. You do a study on that phrase, the power of God, it'll be a real eye-opener to her. It's the power of God into salvation. God not only does the saving, He does the keeping, and He does the working in us. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, don't let your uh, uh, don't let your faith stand in the wisdom of men. Uh, let me tell you something. You put your confidence in what man has to say, you're going to be disappointed, and it won't take long for it to happen. That's true. Uh, but dealing with some insurance uh, 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 problems, if you will, and uh, some pharmacy problems, and I'm just going by what people tell me. And then I make decisions on what people tell me. I'm putting confidence in the information that I've been given. And guess what? I've been given some wrong information. And come to find out, there's another pharmacy involved that I didn't even know was part of the equation. And that's what the holdup was to begin with. 